Hello to everybody. We thank you so much for your interest in following us on Soma Bible Channel. We do appreciate your likes and comments. A big thank for all our regular viewers. For those watching us for the first time, do not forget to subscribe in order to get notified when a new video is released. The topic of this week, The Roots of Restlessness. Let us pray, Almighty God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to study this lesson. Open our hearts to receive it as your will and help us to put it into practice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear listeners, aspens are beautiful trees, reaching 45 to 90 feet or 15 to 30 meters in height. They thrive in cold climates with cool summers. Their wood is used in furniture and also for making matches and paper. Deer and other animals often feed on young aspen trees during hard winters, as their bark contains many nutrients. Aspens need lots of sunshine, and they grow all the time, even in winter, making them important winter food sources for different animals. Aspens, however, are most notorious for the fact that they have one of the largest root systems in the plant world. The roots spread by underground suckers and form a colony that can spread relatively quickly, covering large areas. Individual aspen trees can live up to 150 years, but the larger organism below the ground can live for thousands of years. In this lesson, we want to discover four roots of our restlessness and how we can uproot restlessness. Root number one. Division. Very few people enjoy conflict. We crave harmony and peace. We even teach seminars on peacemaking and conflict resolution in our churches or institutions. However Jesus said in Matthew 10 verse 34 to 39, I did not come to bring peace but to bring a sword. What does this mean, considering that Jesus is the Prince of Peace? Jesus' statement in Matthew 10 verse 34 to 39 is shockingly counterintuitive. The Savior who came as a helpless babe instead of a powerful king surrounded by elite bodyguards, who preached love to both neighbors and enemies, now tells his followers that he brings division and struggles. His disciples and his audience may have wondered, as we are wondering, how can this be? Here, Jesus is teaching about allegiances and loyalties. Jesus challenges his audience to make choices for eternity. A son should love and honor his parents. That was a legal requirement of the law that Moses had received on the mountain. It was part of God's required mode of operation, and yet if that love would trump the hearer's commitment to Jesus, it required a tough decision. A father and a mother should love and care for their children. Yet, if that love would top the parent's commitment to Jesus, it required a difficult decision. First things first, Jesus reminds us in this passage. Root number two, selfishness. As in the case of the Aspen and its larger underground system, selfishness is part of the huge underground system called sin, which keeps us from finding true rest in Jesus. Of all the expressions of sin in our lives, selfishness seems to be the easiest to manifest, doesn't it? For most of us, selfishness is as natural as breathing. By focusing solely on our own needs and ambitions, we forget to take into consideration unseen heavenly realities. Bigger, better, and more are not the foundational principles of God's kingdom. Jesus decided to become our substitute. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 8 describes the blueprint of unselfishness, humility, and love. If love for God and others does not drive our choices and priorities, we will continue to build more barns for ourselves here and put less treasure in heaven. Root number 3. Ambition. In the kingdoms of the world, position meant self-aggrandizement. The people were supposed to exist for the benefit of the ruling classes. Influence, wealth, and education were so many means of gaining control of the masses for the use of the leaders. The higher classes were to think, decide, enjoy, and rule, the lower were to obey and serve. Religion, like all things else, was a matter of authority. The people were expected to believe and practice as their superior is directed. The right of man is man, to think and act for himself, was wholly unrecognized. Conversion is foundational for finding true rest in Jesus. We recognize that we need outside help. We suddenly realize that we cannot depend on ourselves but need to rely on Jesus. We experience a transformation of our values and ambitions. Jesus is telling us, trust me and rely on me as this child does. True greatness is giving up your rights and embracing kingdom values. Root number four, hypocrisy. A hypocrite is somebody who play acts, who wants to appear to be somebody he or she is not. 
The term is used seven times in Matthew 23 in a discourse in which Jesus publicly shames the scribes and Pharisees, the very center of Jewish religious leadership. The Gospels show us Jesus offering grace and forgiveness to adulterers, tax collectors, prostitutes, and even murderers, but he demonstrated little tolerance for hypocrites. According to Jesus, we are hypocrites if we don't do what we say, when we make religion harder for others without applying the same standards to ourselves, when we want others to applaud a religious fervor, and when we require honor and recognition that belongs only to our Heavenly Father. No matter how sharp and to the point his words, Jesus' engagement with those he called hypocrites was nevertheless full of love and concern, even for these hypocrites. So how can we uproot restlessness? Overcoming restlessness always begins with Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He knows the right direction when we wander aimlessly in the wilderness of our media-saturated world, as the divine lawgiver he himself is the personified truth, and his spirit will guide us into all truth. When we are hurt, tired, worn out, sick, and discouraged, he is the life. In fact, he has promised us life in abundance. This includes our eternal home and eternal life, but it also entails a different quality of life here. The Creator surely is able to give abundantly and beyond measure, even now. Dear friends, let not your heart be troubled as an invitation to live in anticipation. When we feel low, Jesus is able to put us on a higher plane. When we struggle with darkness and sin, He is the one who not only began but also will finish His good work in us. No matter how bad things get here and yes, they can get bad, look at the promise we have been given in Jesus. He is preparing a place for us, a place where our pain, restlessness, and suffering will forever be banished. That is the hope we have been given in Christ Jesus, and it is offered to all of us, no matter who we are, no matter our background, and no matter how sordid our lives have been or are now. God bless you and keep you. Thank you again for following us. If you like this message, please share it to your friends and relatives.